Hi and welcome to not another repaint video. I am Hannah from Hoodles and I need to get non-reflective glasses because this is just ridiculous. It's super annoying. And I have been gone for a while, but I am back and I'm still alive. And yeah, let's get into this. A spider terrarium or you know, terrarium spider. Depends on how you look at it. Yeah, let's, let's do it. And it all starts with aluminium foil. I can't say it in American English and I'm sorry about that, but yeah, I scrunch it together into a ball and add more as needed while comparing it to my like uh, half bad sketch. I want to make more spiders, but smaller than this one and uh, maybe I will. I'm making the eyes by first rubbing in eyeshadow on thick black paper, some green, blue and black, and then I seal it with gloss varnish. I let that dry and then I add blobs of the same medium and finally cabochons. There are four of them in two different sizes. I cut them out and there we go, some nice shiny eyes. Since my spiders are so small, I used reference pictures while sculpting and uh, first I covered the base, added eyes and then I added clay around them. This is Living Doll Clay by Super Sculpey, by the way. Some silicone tools are unnecessary but they're nice to work with and here I also added some eyebrow shapes. I don't know what I was thinking. And uh, then I switched to highly professional wooden toothpicks to make it look furry. I've never done this before, so I was amazed at the result. Since the electricity pricing was insane at this point, I wanted to bake all the clay simultaneously, combining it with baking bread, because I've started baking bread, a sure sign that the world is ending. So these are the little claws for the feet. First I bend the end of aluminum wire. Oh, no, now I could say it, aluminum. Anyway, making eight of them. Then I divide the clay into eight equally large pieces and sculpt them into claws. I make a little incision and add the wire. I'd rather have those skeleton joint things, but I, I can't find them in Europe. If you know where one can get them, please let me know. Baked and ready and it looks awesome. She needed mandibles though, so yeah. I dab them with glitter paper to give them some texture. I painted them black with my army painter acrylics. This paint gives such good coverage. Then after letting them dry, I paint them with Liquitex gloss varnish to make them shiny. There is another reason. I got to try some new cool stuff. So I bought this thing. It's like an eyeshadow or something, but it's pigments change color. Instead of dabbing like this, I rubbed it on the dry gloss varnish and the result is just so cool. I'm super happy with them. With that done, let's make a pattern. It's the same as usual, covering the foil with masking tape, then I draw with a permanent marker where to put the seams and how the hair should go. Then I cut with my knife and peeled off the tape. Super easy! And here we have it! All the pieces will never be used again. Go big or go home. I traced it onto white fur fabric, I just wanted a blank canvas to paint on later. Here I'm marking what edges go together, dots are easier than numbers. Then I cut the fabric, careful not to cut the fur itself. To make sewing easier, I cut the fur along the edges and work on the sewing machine like it owes me money. Finally, I turn it right side out and add some stuffing. I tried out the faceplate and uh, yeah, looks cute. Next is the body. I sketched how big I wanted it and cut it out of the paper. Then I started this project. I planned to make it around 20 centimeters big and uh, it's not. Here I spent an entire day making this template for the top part. It did not work out and I had a minor breakdown and threw the pieces across the room. No child or animal was hurt or present at that moment. I made this after lying on the floor thinking and listening to Orphan Land, my go-to music when I have anxiety. I can't explain the math, not many of you would want me to anyway I think. There was a lot of Pythagoras theorem and uh, ratio. I transferred it onto cardboard to make a model and check that everything is okay. I don't want to cut unnecessary glass. I'm taping it together before marking all the pieces and cutting off the bottom. I wanted to use the bottom to make the little diorama, so I cut it off and worked some paper clay into it. Water helps keep it smooth, but I also wanted some raised parts, not just a flat football field surface. And while that dries, I made grass out of sawdust. I stood in my kitchen sawing a piece of wood into small pieces to get this. Then I used a sieve to get the smallest particles before using one with bigger holes that let through bigger ones. I ended up with three different sized sawdust. Next, I mixed turquoise acrylic paint with water and dish soap. I don't know if the soap did much, but you know what? Better safe than sorry. 
Then I mixed in all the sawdust ensuring everything got soaked before spreading it out and letting it dry completely. It looked pretty cool. Then I did the same with the other two making one cerise and one more bluish green. While the grass is drying in peace I continue with the base, painting it with turquoise and black paint. I dabbed to make it look more realistic but then again I glued grass on top so it didn't make any difference and while that dries I make the top part out of broken glass. I am far from being a professional, I just realized that this could be done and that I had to do it and it's silly but I had a good time. I followed the pattern making all the pieces, cut some adhesive, copper tape and taped the sides. This is my favorite part, it looks so cool wrapped in copper. I'm pushing the tape to wrap the sides if it makes sense, I'm framing the pieces and it looks gorgeous. With some masking tape I tape them together and after a final check I can start soldering them together but again I'm not a pro and so far I've only soldered the corners because I love the copper look. So bear with me and my silly crafting. I first brush with some floss and then I just solder away. Then I remove the tape and the glass dome thing, now I can have it as a reference while planning out the little terrarium thing. First let's make a little tree, I twisted these scrap wires to make the tree trunk and branches and then I took the thickest one and pulled it through the base to stabilize it. Why does it look like I have two extra fingers? Anyway I hot glue it and use my metal ruler to make it flat and uh, perfect. Next I used some tissues and watered down glue, this was super tricky and took a while but very therapeutic. To make the foliage I used some soft craft clay, it's like a marshmallow texture but air dry clay properties, it's super cool. I rolled some balls, flattened them and then let them air dry, if they're not dry before painting they might start molding from the inside which, you know, sucks. Trust the process, gotta trust the process. I painted the stems with burnt umber, mixed some light pink and dry brushed and uh, then I changed my mind and went over with some peach color and in the end that watered down gold paint. I had no plan, I just did and it turned out well. Next I added the grass. First I used a lot of watered down glue, sprinkled grass on top and removed excess and it looked cool and I am super happy I added some roots sticking up. This project is a long story of and while well, that dries because many things had to dry and I can't leave it in peace to do so so I poke things to see if they're done and they never are. Oh I got this for Christmas for my mom and my brother, the pink foliage looking boring so I added some uh, glitter. I glued some fallen leaves on the ground before adding the foliage to the tree and finally I started to feel like this would be okay. Notice that I twisted the ends into circles to make them stick better and uh, there we go, looks pretty awesome. Let's decorate with some resin rooms. It's supposed to glow in the dark but it uh, doesn't work that well to be honest. I made the caps on the tips of pencils, cure them in UV light, then peel them off. Then I made stems by covering brush strands in more resin. Finally I added them to the hats with more resin, I forgot to show that. I drilled a couple of holes to pull them through then attached them underneath with hot glue. This was super fun. I glossed them with Tamiya gloss varnish making them look a bit more moist and there we go. Next I made some crystal things. These are an old alum crystal project my son and me did and I wanted to make a mold for a while. So I used this silicone fast curing mold putty, mix equal parts and smoosh it onto the crystals and it takes about a half an hour to cure but I wait an hour to be safe and to drink coffee and then I peeled it off and it looked so cool. I mixed some resin with glow in the dark powder, pour it in and let it cure for 24 hours. I did add some iridescent foil off camera, you can kind of see it and uh, then I added them to the little diorama. Let's see if it works. Yes, so cool. The base is finished so let's make a body. If you are still here listening to all of this I salute you. Anyway, I sew these pieces along the outer edge, then turn it right side out, then I add the base, not the base base, but another base, because let's be extra careful. Next I worked on the legs. I hot glue pieces of stuffing, roll them and tie them together with some strings. Talking about leg day, I sewed eight tubes, turned them right side out and dressed the legs. 
I kept the hair long around the feet. Claws, tippy tappy toes? I don't know what to call them. Anyway, first I cut my finger, bent the wire and tied the legs together, making two bunches of four. I always have small wounds on my hands for more or less dumb reasons. I'd call them battle wounds, but they're more like foolish lacerations. It is what it is. Here I'm gluing the fabric to the claws and hot glue the legs to the body. I added a piece of fabric underneath to make it look neater, sewing it in place just in case. Then I hot glued the head to the body. Next I painted the faceplate. I wanted it to match the fur but realized it was way too pink. Uh, after adding some green it became perfect though. Let's move to the airbrush station. I used white fur to paint and I wanted it bright. You know, give me those rave vibes. So I used turquoise and magenta and of course I had my doubts, but that's okay. I dry brushed the faceplate with white to reveal the details, then I did my favorite part, scraping the paint off the eyes. So it all looked super flat and boring until I bent the legs and then I was like, yeah, I am onto something here. I gave her a pedicure, painted all the little toes and then attached the mandibles. I should have used hot glue for this, but it worked in the end. I forgot they have these little mini legs in front of the teeth, so I glued two pieces of fabric and then she got lashes. Like super super long lashes, because you know why not, it's cute. Finally I can start assembling the rest. First I taped the dome to the base, then I use silicone to glue them together. This is left over from me making two terrariums. It dries quickly and I cut the fur and hot glued a little terrarium on the base. I was not fond of the silver look, so I covered it in fall fur, which looked much better. It hides the inside a bit, but that's okay. She got glittery spikes on her head, and I glued the fur to her faceplate, and then I sent a picture to my mom, and I asked, you know, what is missing? And she thought it looked like a cute toy, and I figured, you know what, some gold embellishment would do the trick. So I used Milliput, which this awesome person recommended, mixed equal parts and pressed it into this mold. Then I took them out and let them cure on a cardboard roll so they weren't flat, and then I airbrushed them gold and uh, used a wash to make them look less plastic and new. Then she got some purple ribbons, added them to the legs with hot glue. And she got some on the head too. Next time I make an art doll, I'll add fur to the faceplate to make it all come together better, but I am super happy with how this turned out. I usually share the certificate of authenticity, but you know what, I'll grow some crystals this time. I had these left from making my spider terrariums and I wanted to try one. Anyway, I am happy being back from... well, I wouldn't call it a break. I've had to renovate the bathroom from water damage and all my creativity has gone into that. And just handling it all is draining, especially when you're living by yourself and have to handle it by yourself. So yeah, it's finished though, so now I can return to making dolls. Yay! So anyway, no before or after, but here is the result. Thank you so, so much for hanging on and watching the process. I learned a lot and I got to try some new things. And now I can fill my head with more silly ideas. So again, thank you for watching and until next time. Bye!